Thanks for joining us again today. We're back to the Bible Canada's Truth and Life today with Dr. John Newfeld. Uh, we've been continuing our series of the numbers of questions that people send in about all different types of issues relative to the Bible and Christian living. And uh, today we're going to continue with a conversation in general about the church and our perspective of the church and, and the growth of the church. Before we get into that, just want you to know that you can subscribe to Truth and Life today at YouTube. Uh, you can like us on Facebook or you can download our app, Back to the Bible, and see Truth and Life every week uh, right here. Uh, John, we're very grateful to have you here again today. It's wonderful. Just I'm enjoying doing this together with you, Ben. It is, you know, and, and we're having some great conversations. And you know, everything is stimulated uh, by the concerns, obviously, or the thoughts of our listeners. Uh, but uh, it's marvelous just to go deeper a little bit and decide, you know, what are the what are the implications of these things upon the follower of Jesus or the church. And uh, some interesting questions about the church today. And let me begin right, right off the top with a question that asks, is it important or significant for me to belong or attend a church? I think the first answer that I usually give is this. Look, Christ said he would build his church. Yeah. It's his agenda. You either want to be a part of what he's doing or you don't, right? So that's just okay. a part of it. Uh, the second thing that I always say is, I mean, read your New Testament. There's not a New Testament book that is not written to a church. The church and not individuals are always the addressees. And so, I mean, even a book like Philemon, where you think it's being written to one individual, but he has a church meeting in his house, and the letter was to be read to the church that was meeting in his house. So there is no record in the Bible itself of individualistic faith. It just doesn't exist, and it's not considered Christianity. You know, but it does seem to be sort of a, a growing preference for people, that they think, you know, they can do their God thing or their Jesus thing on their own without reference to this um, chaotic church thing yeah. uh, that we have in our in Yeah, our because church. what we meet when we meet people in church yeah. is people as sinful as we are. Yeah. Oh, Ben, what are we going to do with them, right? So um, as a matter of fact, it's always chaotic. It's always disappointing in the local church. It's a lot of things, mm -hmm. but it's also what Christ has brought into being. Yeah. And we must honor what he honors. So I think we always start with that. You know, and I really like what you said. It really is God's agenda. That's, that's, that's what God has chosen. It's his chosen mechanism. So it's not like we have a choice to choose this or to choose that. God has chosen the church. Yeah, I mean, you get, you know, looking here at Hebrews 13. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way and imitate their faith. Well, who are the leaders? Well, the leaders are your leaders in your local church. Yeah. You're supposed to be imitating them. Yeah. Well, if you don't have a local church, how are you going to do that? Yeah. Right? So, you know, there's, there's just lots of stuff like that. So if, if the church is indeed God's chosen mechanism, why is it in decline? Yes. We were asked that question. So uh, it's an interesting question for Canada yeah. uh, because many of us think that the church is in decline here. I'm going to say it's not. But maybe we need to back up. I had a, a marvelous conversation on our, on our uh, radio program with Michael Haken. And nobody knows the history of the Canadian church better than he, I don't think. And Haken points to three elements that have deeply impacted the church. So at the time of Canadian Confederation, 90%, 90% of Canadians would have identified themselves as Christians. Wow. So it says, Haken, three things happened. The first was the end of the First World War. Our soldiers came home and seen more evil than they had ever anticipated. Mm. And many of them lost faith. Now, the thing that was happening in the local church is that being Christian was just an expression of being Canadian. So the idea of deeply ingrained sin, of which we must repent of and recognizing that there's a real evil one who seeks our undoing and that the flesh militates against us and the need for the new birth and all of that kind of stuff was not being actively taught. So the people that went to war had no foundation mm -hmm biblical foundation to handle what they were seeing. Yeah. So that was step number one. Step number two is the advent of liberalism. And so I would think that if there's anything that the 20th century has told us, it's not the failure of the church, but the utter failure of liberal Christianity. It shows itself completely unable to reach out and sustain itself. Everywhere that liberalism goes, it utterly devastates the faith of people. In fact, I would argue liberalism is the halfway house out of Christianity. Yeah. 
Mm. The next generation never believes anyway. Um, so that's the second issue. And the third issue is that, you know, the 60s and the 70s and the social upheaval. But it's not that. People have this hunger for spiritual reality. And in the 60s and the 70s, there were all sorts of individuals who were actually, uh, you know, going to church and all you heard in church were rules. Okay. So, you know, I don't know, you, know, you don't have hair anymore, Ben, but, uh, <laughs> but when you were young, I mean, when I was young, my hair was getting a little on the long side and that was the... I remember going to church and hearing a sermon on Absalom who got his hair stuck in the tree. And uh, young men, you better go get your hair cut because the devil is waiting in the, in the trees to ensnare you. So it was all about external rule keeping and people were dropping out. Yeah. Now, I think there's something that's happened here today and that is evangelicalism in Canada is not in decline. It is actually in a modest growth pattern. There are more of us constantly, and it continues to grow faster than the rate of the population growth in Canada. So we are making inroads into this country. So the evangelical church, the Bible-believing church, the Bible-preaching church, the, the church that holds that you can't be saved outside of through Christ alone, and that you can count on every word in the Scripture, put your faith and trust in Jesus. Now, that kind of a church is actually in the increase. It's not declining at all. Hmm. If you, if you were to ask people, they would think, you know, the liberal church is the progressive church, yeah. is the church that, you know, is, is connecting with what's really going on with culture. And yet, it's the same church that because they're sort of dismissing uh, biblical truth, in the end is faltering and dying and becoming irrelevant. Yeah, it's funny. Exactly, Ben. You, you said about relevance and irrelevance. In an attempt to be relevant, yeah. the church has become irrelevant. Yeah. So if the issues before the church are always issues of social justice, and please, you know, the, the gospel does include issues of social justice. Yeah. But if, if the issues we talk about are social justice and, and, and climate change and, uh, you know, and uh, 101 sexuality issues, so we're constantly revisiting whether or not the biblical, you know, modality of, of sexual morality is still relevant for today. So, you know, we're doing constantly going over the same ground and we're discounting scripture in an attempt to be relevant. What we're actually finding or what the liberal church finds is it's, three steps behind the culture as a whole. Yeah. The culture thinks it's irrelevant because it's not leading culture because it's following culture. Yeah. Yeah. So that's irrelevant. But what we have to say as evangelicals is a message that's timeless. Yeah. You're lost in your sins. You're not reconciled to God. You have no foundation upon which to stand. Culture is changing all the time and you change with it and you don't know who you even are anymore. There is a truth that stands the test of time. God sent his son into the world and his death is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. That message will continue to draw men and women. And by the way, Ben, one of the things that's happening with the immigration into Canada, so many immigrants are hungry to hear what the Christian faith is saying. I read a report recently on Europe that a great many of the Muslim refugees into Europe are going to church. I mean. It's amazing. They're saying, tell us about Christianity. Hmm. So I think we have great days ahead of us, yeah. and uh, we may find that this will indeed be maybe our finest hour. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm hardly, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I don't have a head bowed down and say, what are we going to do about the church? I'm so optimistic yeah. about the church. Yeah. Lest we think the evangelical church is perfect, um, we sort of struggle with that a bit ourselves over the last. 30, 40 years, that sense of being relevant to culture and in some respects uh, sacrificing the fact that Jesus was very countercultural, yeah. and uh, we have to be cautious of that. Yeah, we have to be very careful that our pulpits aren't filled with, you know, how to have a good sex life, how to have a good uh, income, your best life now, all of that kind of stuff. Just preach the text of Scripture and believe that the most relevant thing that you can tell people comes from the pages of the text. Follow it through, verse by verse. Yeah. Analyze it. Apply it to people's lives. It'll transform them. That's the formula. It's not really that hard, yeah. but that will do it. And you know, when we had, uh, we've talked about this a few times, you know, I had a conversation around a table in respect to who we are as a ministry. We came up with this very, very, uh, very simple slogan, I guess, if nothing else. We teach the Bible, and that's what we're all about, and we're striving to be about. But that is critical 
to us as a ministry, and I think critical to us as an effective ministry. That's what really attracted me to back to the Bible. Yeah. We teach the Bible. I mean, I thought, yeah, what else can we be about? Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. just delighted. Yeah. yeah. The church hasn't lost its significance then. No, and the church does have a significance as well to our culture yeah. to speak truth into the culture. We, we, you know, the old saying, we know, somebody needs to speak truth to power. You know, power in our day now is saying that, you know, um, sexuality, for instance, mm -hmm. um, the value of human life as another instance. You know, it's not just abortion, but now it's end of life issues. I mean, we have truths to speak, and the truths are about a loving God who cares deeply about human life. And uh, the reason we, we speak about sexuality the way that we do is because we know that the sexual, sexual morality of our culture is literally destroying people. Mm -hmm. And power is now being used in our country to destroy human lives. We need to speak truth to power. And so we have a prophetic voice, and it won't be a voice like all the prophets in the past. They are persecuted, yeah. but it's a voice that if this culture doesn't hear what we have to say, they are without hope. Yeah. So I would say to any culture and ours, Canada, yeah. the only hope for Canada is that there's a vibrant church that speaks truth into this culture. And we shouldn't assume that they're going to necessarily embrace that truth. Yeah, but we should assume that truth will still find a mark. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thanks so much, John. Uh, and a, a great message about the church, and we really do want to uh, just encourage people about the importance of church membership, the importance of, of finding a Bible teaching church. Amen. Thanks, John, so much for, for joining us today and just your insights in respect of the church and the importance of church membership, the importance of, uh, of getting involved in a church. Uh, that's going to teach you the Word of God and help you in your walk with Christ every day. And uh, we look forward to next week as we talk more about the book of Revelation and uh, a great series that John has done on the book of Revelation and all that again next week on Truth and Life Today. We hope you're enjoying the new Truth and Life Today show with Dr. John Newfeld. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode each week. But we want you to be involved in the show. To submit your own personal questions to Dr. John, you can email us at info at backtothebible.ca or find us on Facebook by searching Truth and Life Today.